Welcome to our lecture online. In this video, we're going to talk about the details, why we need to know exactly the difference in the time between the GPS time on the surface of the Earth, that's kept by the atomic clock system on the Earth, by the control center, and the time by the atomic clocks on these satellites themselves. And we know that there's a difference between the two times, and that difference changes continuously as there's a drift on the clock in the, on, the, uh, on the satellites due to various reasons. One of them is that they don't run as accurately as the atomic clocks on the Earth. And secondly, we have some relativistic effects with ten, which cause the clocks on the satellite to run a little bit faster than the clocks on the Earth. So they're continuously differing from one another by a greater and greater amount. So we need to find out what that difference is at all times. And so that's why we have this calculation here where the time the GPS time is going to be equal to the satellite time minus some difference. Remember that this time runs ahead of this time, that's why we have to subtract the delta TSV. And then here we have the equation, the delta TSV, which looks just like a quadratic equation. Now, the time SV is the effective SV PRN code phase time at message transmission time. So it's the time that's synced up to the message as it's being transmitted from the antenna, and not just from the antenna, from the phase center of the antenna, which is the point on the antenna from which the ENM radiation spreads spherically outward. So it's a very exact position on the antenna. Obviously, any errors from the starting point of the message on the, on the, uh, on the satellite will, of course, also give you that same error when it gets to the ground. So we want to minimize the error of the transmission, of the time sync of the transmission, so we know, need to know exactly where that's centered, and it's centered at the face center. Now, the, the navigation message will include ephemeris data, which is updated every four hours. Now, the updating to the satellite happens typically once a day. So what happens then is we send six chunk, six four-hour chunks of ephemeris data every day. Now that's ideal, and so hopefully that can be done every day, and every day we send up a new set of data, ephemeris data, in four-hour chunks. So that data will be transmitted from the satellite to the receiver for a period of four hours before we go to the next set. Transmit that for four hours to the next set, transmit that for four hours, and so forth. Now, we can store up to about, I believe, 72 days worth of ephemeris data. So in case that we cannot update it for whatever reason, it can continue with older and older and older ephemeris data. But again, we always adjust for that by finding the exact difference between the GPS time on the Earth and the SV time on the satellite. So what happens is we have a GPS time that is essentially continuous, the same time, just continuously runs very accurately, kept by the control center on the Earth. And then we have the SV time, which over time varies from the GPS time. And so graphically, I've represented the delta SV by the distance between those two lines. One line that's straight, GPS time, which just keeps going continuously at the same rate. And then we have the SV time, which then varies in the rate at which it runs relative to the GPS time. And so the difference between them continuously changes. So what happens is we then approximate this slope here by a quadratic equation, and then we find an exact center point at the halfway point, halfway between those four hour, halfway in that four hour segment, we have an exact lineup, the difference between the SV time, uh, the SV time and the GPS time. So just like with a quadratic equation, if you think about the distance between the curve represented by this quadratic equation and the x-axis, we call that y, and you can see that y always changes. And at the halfway point, we can, we can say that this would be the exact position between the two curves at that moment in time, if this was, of course, a time dependency. Here we have a similar uh, slope. Here we have the change in the SV time, and here we have the steady as a rock uh, time of the, uh, of the satellite, uh, I mean of the GPS, and so the difference between them is the delta SV, 
and we have this four hour window in which we try to calculate the difference as we go from this point in time to this point in time. Notice our reference time for the four hours is the TLC, the time of the clock, which is the clock that runs on the GPS and gets renewed every, every week. So that's the TLC that we have in here. Instead of using the GPS time, uh, we end up using the SV time because it doesn't really matter if we use the GPS time or the SV time because we're talking about a great number of seconds so that small little fraction of a second doesn't really matter. So you can see that this curve which represents the SV time simply needs to be represented by some sort of quadratic equation. Notice that we have the three constants AF2, AF1 and AF0 which is like the A, B, C in our quadratic equation there. We do have to add a delta t for the relativistic effect, and that then gives us the delta t as v. And notice that every block of four hours will have a new set of parameters, AF2, AF1, and AF0, to recalculate the difference between the GPS time and the SV time, the GPS time and the SV time, the GPS time and the SV time in four hour blocks. And so we can do that by sending those parameters every subframe, well, let's see, that, that would be in the first subframe where it's 9 and 10. I believe those are, is it 8, 9, 9 and 10? I think it's 9 and 10. I might have said 8 and 9, but I believe it's 9 and 10. And so that then gives us the information we need to update the ephemeris data, which is the orbital parameters of, of that particular satellite, because every satellite sends its own orbital parameters that are very, very accurate. And from that, we can get very accurate position, GPS position, with the receivers on the Earth by again syncing up the, the SV time to the actual GPS time. And that is how it's done.